Who among these real people will continue? Who among these real people will be able to claw themselves out through some fictitious war out into the light of day uh, onto our very real planet Earth over there in order to join the Cro-Magnons as they... Um, I don't know what the Cro-Magnons are doing, but as they do what they do, talk to each other, I guess. Who's going to get the opportunity <laughs> to talk to other people? Um, we shall see. I'm going to try and finish this up today, even though we're, we're just starting turn three. Um, did, did the events already. The only thing that happened was this guy popped up. Ba -da -da! Um, and so we have seven turns to do. We'll see if we can get that done. Uh, I need to because the crew of the Buckland Wren is almost ready for their next mission. And I need to get this table cleared uh, beforehand. We're rolling to see if Pika Cole, uh, who is being played by Curly, for those of you who don't recall, uh, gets some reinforcements or whether he kills one of the leaders. Now, because of how this is set up, he sort of wins out a little bit um, either way. Uh, he doesn't necessarily want his leaders to die, but any any people that die, any leaders that die, are going to be um, people who aren't going to be vying for the attention of Cat and Runt and the others who are in the Origins game uh, because they will, they'll be out of the running. So he kind of wins either way. He either gets um, more reinforcements or he loses a competitor. That's a five. That's going to be three reinforcements he gets. Very nice. All right, so the Peter Cole side has moved for turn three. Um, interesting things. Um, Tater, as in Todd, has kind of made it her business to hold this area down here. Um, other things, Tremolu, nine, nine ball. He's he's going around healing or fixing up troops that are, that are broken down. Uh, this area up here got more reinforcements. Um, and then... And Goulemont, who is Sid, she decided not to be attacking this or um, besieging this, but, uh, but rather wheeled around this way and is going to be hitting these units over here um, to kind of soften them up. She, she got discouraged by trying to siege Sine. Did not work. Um, a lot of pile up here, which is going to make this really hard for the Gargantua player to get into. So now we're going to do some attacks. There's the result of combat. Uh, so Scooch unit right here got taken off, as did a um, as did a Mooney right here. Uh, so that's they're getting thinned out. And remember, uh, the Gargantua player, the Grand Grusira, uh Kingdom, they can't attack this turn because of a mediation which is happening. So they're going to get to move now. But basically, it's just going to be kind of a reinforcing move uh, because there's not a lot else they can do other than just play the defense until Gargantua shows up next round. So we're starting off turn four. I just want to talk a little bit about luck in this game and how the luck has been favoring one side or another. So um, the Picrocoline, I, I feel like this this first part, uh, a lot depend, a lot hinges on whether or not you get past Frere Jean that, that first roll. Um, the Crocoline player was able to get through the Abbey pretty quickly. I think they did it on turn one. And I think that um, allowed them to flow over into the castle pretty fast. Um, are they as far as they would like to be before Gargantua comes in? Because Gargantua's coming in this turn, and he's bringing a lot of forces, and his, I'm not, I, I have to explore how his powers affect everything else. But it feels like, you know, they're maybe doing pretty well. Um... The only like real downside for them, luck-wise, there's probably been some downsides for them with my skill, uh, but luck-wise is the death of a leader. And I mention that because they just rolled another death of a leader. So let's take a look at what leaders of theirs have died, or are going to die. Here are the contestants for death. Um, I had a rule, I didn't let the real people know, but um, I knew that if um, Curly did his, his thing where he um, put the other leader's life at danger with his reinforcements, he would then be eligible to be voted for uh, voted to death. <laughs> voted to death. I like that. Um, so he's he's available to be voted on now, and they do know that now. They didn't know he didn't know when he made that choice that that was going to be the repercussion, but it is. Um, I wanted to address why these guys don't get to vote. 
Uh, they are the people. It seems like maybe they should get to vote. They're the they're the army guys and whatnot. Uh, the reason why I'm not going to let them vote is because they are a bit hardier, actually. They're not subject to these instant deaths. They have numerous units on the board. Their units can come back in reinforcements. So that, just to kind of balance that out a little bit, you know, I feel like you know, when I, we, we were first started picking which real people would pick which um, leaders, it seemed like the leaders would be better than the army guys, but... Um, how I ended up having it is I think the army guys maybe have a, <coughs> a little bit more of an advantage in terms of ultimate survival beyond the game. So let's get to voting here. And there will be no re-votes this time. It was uh, two to one to one. So one of these is going to be out, and that is you. She just dar narrowly dodged the falling body. And the healer Tremolo, he's also out of the game. Uh, you want to see the vote? There it was. Curly and Tater both voted for Nine Ball. Uh, that gave him the majority. And as often as the Picrocolines have gotten leader eliminations, the um, Grand Goulsier have gotten um, reinforcements. So the, every every loss that they've they've had sustained so far has come back on. That's a that's a that's a gesture of their own luck. Both sides have kind of had their own. Um, sort of fortune. The Picrocoline, they were able to get through the Abbey very quickly, which I think was helpful. Uh, taking this, this spot seems important to them because that's kind of their, then becomes their base of operations. And if they can hold all of this, that's sufficient. I mean, that's quite a lot of points. I would have to work out how much it is, but it seems like they've got a strong control of the map right now. Uh, but then here comes the reinforcements, so we'll see what happens once they are on the table. Picker Cole just got more um, uh, reinforcements from his Castle of Death, so that is, that that gave him confidence to send these uh, these units down the road here. He's trying to get a strong attack on um, on Sine here to try and take it before uh, Gargantua and all those folk come back. Smiley has just successfully taken Sine here. Uh, Sine is a dangerous place for them to try and hold. I think uh, the. Um, Gargantua player, he gets some advantages for being near uh, a vineyard. I think he's a, an alcoholic, and so uh, he's very large, but he also likes to have alcohol. He needs to be well, uh, to, to be able to drink a lot in order to perform uh, to his fullest abilities on the battlefield. Dun dun! All right, so the Grand Goussier sent a letter to Gargantua and his friends, Eudemont, and Jim Nasty, and they brought this huge army to the rescue here. Um, since I put that out there, I had a chance to read over what Gargantua can do, and also the victory conditions. I paid a little more attention to that. A lot of times I don't pay attention too much to victory conditions in games, which is unfortunate because they are a key part of the game. They sort of um, they affect the narrative, even if the ultimate victory doesn't really get you anything. Um, so anyway, how it's looking is Gargantua is really quite like a, a superman. He can move eight spaces, which is more than anyone else. Uh, the, the highest is six, which are uh, the other leaders and knights can, can go. He can move eight spaces, can't be hurt. He's not affected by terrain, so he can, you know, we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He can get halfway across the board in one turn. He can also use MPs to attack, movement points to attack. So if he's standing next to, like if he were standing here, he could attack eight times. Uh, the, the downside of that is anyone else with a G on their marker wouldn't be able to move in that in that turn if he, if he did that. So, um... They've got a huge military advantage once he's on the, the map, as you can see. Um, the flip side of that is the the um, the pick the pickles the pickle pick 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 They may um, they score in a lot of different spaces. So they they score points when um, for mills these little mills here. I think castles as well. Mills. Castles. Um, I think it's mainly mills and castles. And then any time, ooh, and any time an enemy leader is captured or eliminated, so the Grand Goussier side's already got two points there. But mills, there's a lot of mills and castles. They score points there. The um, GK player, the Grand Goussier player, they only score on on uh, vineyards. So that's not. There's only 
two of those on the map I'm seeing. Maybe no three. There's one there. So they only score on those. They have I think they have a smaller um, scoring opportunity. So I think what the game's going to look like is the the PK player is just going to be trying to slow down Gargantua so that they can hold as many windmills and and um, abbeys too. They score on abbeys I think abbeys and castles as as possible uh, at the end of the game. But before any of that happens, Red Tomato has just entered the map and he sees an opportunity. And I swear to you, I did not plan this. I didn't. I. I am purposely not. One of the ways I can. I can play well, uh, multiplayer, solitaire is I don't. I am not totally aware of all the rules. And I don't plan super strong ahead because if you do that, you and you, a lot. A lot of of strategic thinking involves wondering what the other person is going to do. And if you already know what they're going to do, it's kind of. It's harder to do it. Anyway, um, Curly is here in his big dark tower. Red Tomatoes here. Curly and Red Tomato have a long history. They've played a couple games together now. And um, so Red Tomato enters on the map. He sees Curly right across the way. He came on with a horseman. That means he can do his gymnasty special attack that he gets one per game. One, two, three, four. He's going to do this right now. And this is kind of an all or nothing. He's got a 66% chance of this working out. If it works out for him, he gets rid of all these guys. If it doesn't work out for him, um, he gets captured. So let's just do that roll right now and see what happens with the Gymnasty special attack. Uh, da, 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 da. And he did it. So let's just make be clear we have this right. Alone, a stack of enemy units are into that. Da, 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 da. GK player rolls a die in the room. The units of the enemy stack are eliminated and if a leader was present in the hex, he's eliminated too. So, geez, that is a little bit anticlimactic, I think. Uh, I don't know. I mean, the the big bad enemy leader is now gone. Their their main way of getting reinforcements is now gone. I think um, it would be important to understand <laughs> that that could happen when playing the game, and maybe he would have protected this side. Uh, so, Curly, I'm sorry, you're out. Another uh, rather auspicious thing for the GK player that I didn't plan on. Uh, there's this novel token here called um, Gargantuan's Mare, and I think this is like a Babe the Blue Blue Ox sort of uh, thing, for those of you familiar with the American folktale of Paul Bunyan. Uh, but if you choose, in order to do this, I mean, obviously you have to have Gargantua on the map, but if Gargantua is not by the water when you select this, during this Gargantuan phase, if Gargantua is not adjacent to the Vessel River, which I think it's this one, I think that translates to the Vessel. There's two rivers on the map, but this looks more like the Vessel than that one, and it would make more sense if it's that one, uh, if it's this one, because it's kind of the central one. Um, what it does is it's going to make everyone on either side of the river suffer a loss. So I think maybe the horse drinks all the water up, and that um, creates like a vacuum that sucks people into the riverbed and hurts them. Uh, it doesn't hurt the the leaders, however, and it just so happens that it's all purple guys on either side, other than Gargantua and Frere Jean, and you're basically invincible if you're in the Grand Glousset. You can't attack anyone in there, uh, but you can't be hurt either. So he's letting his horse drink, and the drink is going to uh, severely affect the Picrocline side. More bad news for Picrocol. Uh, they got another bad... Um, Bad event roll. They can't. Their leaders can't use their um, skill to help their people. Thankfully, they don't have too many leaders left. Bad news also for Grand Goussier. I've been rolling really high for these events. I have, the lower ones tend to be better for people. The middle ones are kind of neutral, and the high ones are bad uh, for the most part. But they got a death of a leader, so we're gonna have to do a vote similar to before. Um, I. Gar I don't know if Gargantua can be one of them. One of his leaders of his choice. Uh, it doesn't say Gargantua can't be one, so I think Gargantua can be one. That's going to make for an interesting choice from uh, from their perspective because, you know, this is really the only way that Snugbug can be eliminated from the running if they are going to win. So we have to look at Snugbug, Red Tomato, and Twigmar, and Hair Bear. And that was a very, very hard decision. I mean, basically, they're they're choosing their between their huge advantage and their whole side winning, and um, whether they themselves get to win. 
and it was close. I went back and forth with pretty much every single vote uh, on numerous occasions. But I think the fact that gymnasts, uh, gymnasts, gymnasty attack paid off. I think that maybe um, that maybe tilted things towards eliminating Snug Mug. Very unexpected for me. I didn't even. I, I kind of thought it. You know, I'd just gotten done talking about how the narrative was going to be all about. Um, whether or not, um, whether or not, well, it was, the narrative was going to all be, sorry, I started thinking about something else. Uh, narrative was going to be all about, uh, Gargantua versus, versus everyone else and like swatting away ants, but it's going to be, you know, more of a straight up battle now, I think, uh, which should be interesting. So I made a huge mistake. Gymnast was not supposed to be able to use a gymnasty attack on someone in a castle. I um, subsequently had moved a lot of things as a result of that, however, so I'm not going to go back. That, and that's just not fun and really is it worth it. I made a mistake. Uh, we can accept that and we're not going to judge the game based on that mistake. We will judge me instead. So what I did to try to make things a little bit right is rather than have Picker Cole be eliminated, rather than have Curly be eliminated, he is instead imprisoned. Um, so there's a chance that he can come back into the game. I'm going to make them stick with um, the elimination of Snugbug, however, despite the fact that they did it on faulty information. That's the way the world is. It's rough and it's not fair. So without Gargantua, this has become more of more akin to just like a standard kind of small uh, military battle. So what's happened so far um, is GK is trying to press their their advantage while the the Picrocoline player Picrocoline player is is in somewhat of a disarray. A lot of their guys are running away, and they managed to capture Sid. Um, Hair Bear came around here with his forces. They had a big press on the town. Got rid of the town. And now I think they have some sh gunfire they're going to be trying on um, the castle itself. It would be nice if they can take it before um, the potential release of Curly. All right, so Picker Cult just had a bad event at the start of turn six. Not hugely bad, but it kind of just compounds their poor luck. So their artillery, their remaining artillery just ran out of ammunition. So they all had to flip over to this um, depleted side. Big roll for Twigmar right now. Um, he is, the, the GK player, they're trying to besiege this big castle. It's hard, it's hard. They pretty much need to get sixes most of the time. Here's a chance where, with, with, um, Twigmar's Frere Jean combined with, uh, the big cannon he has there. That gives him a 12, uh, plus 1d6 minus, uh, what is it, 4? No, minus 6. I think he just needs, if if he gets anything but a 1, he's got the guy beat. If he gets a 1, he's captured because of Frere Jean's weird particular that if he fails in an attack, he is uh, imprisoned. So he's, he's going to risk it, though. And that's going to work out. So we're at the end of Phase 6, and things get kind of interesting here. If you've used up all your novel markers like I did right away, um, we're going to have to roll now. And whatever, since there's no novel markers, we got to roll. And whatever roll we get, we're going to repeat that phase for this game, or on this turn. Let's see what it is. Phase 1. What's Phase 1? That's events. Fun. So we're going to roll four events in a row. Uh, two for the end of this turn and two for the start of the next. Let's go, go ahead and let's do that on camera. Uh, 42, no 24, I've been using this one as the first one. Picrocole's Anger, that's not going to do anything because Picrocole is not in here, but what that would have done, uh, this is an interesting one, it would make it more likely that Curly would kill one of his leaders as opposed to getting reinforcements. All right, well we're going to do the GK event from the end of turn six, then we'll just go right into turn seven. And that's a 22. Reinforcements again. All right, so I'll just I guess put one here and one there again. Okay, PK events for the start of turn seven. Forty-six. Challenge: The PK player must immediately eat a dish of bloody offal, or give one victory point to his opponent. Huh. So. Let's see, so are you guys going to eat a dish of bloody offal? Is that, what is offal? I'm going to have to look up what offal is and I'll be right back. 
All right, so it's internal organ meat. Um, there are people among the PK side that would do that in order to advance in this game. There are some that would not. I will let you decide for yourself which you believe won't. Just to round out our round of events there, the GK players event, they lost um, some uh, some uh, ammunition. So poor watermelon there. She thought she was safe way over here, but suddenly she just ran out of ammunition. And the GK is slowly wearing away on this castle. This castle's not worth a ton of points. It just feels strategically appropriate. Um, I wonder if maybe the PK couldn't just like back off and just take these windmills. Um, I think that's actually Tater's plan. She's not going to push too hard here. She's been just kind of... She hasn't done a full court press against them. Um, and she's hoping to take these windmills for some easy points at the end. I did some checking on, on the scoring. Everyone scores on towns, and that's these, and castles. Um, the PK's main advantage is they score on windmills. Uh, but then the GK also scores on vineyards. So, vineyards, vineyards. So their, um, their point advantage isn't that big. Not as big as I early made it, earlier made it out to be. Um, Chappie's doing a press up here. He's doing something kind of fun. He sent, sent some knights north on the road away from the main battle. Uh, we'll see what kind of gamble the Chapster has in mind. And we're seeing sooner than I expected, um, the repeated round, or repeated phases turn ended up being the Grand Goussier's movement. So um, they were pretty much placed where they wanted to be, so they haven't really done a lot of movement. They are going to move that guy there. Um, except for the horsemen, the chappies of the Grand Goussier forces are moving along the north. And another death of the leader. We're starting phase, or turn eight of the game. Another death of the leader for the PK. So let's do the voting. Another interesting vote this, this time. Um, Curly is their most effective leader. However, he is also captured. So that makes him uh, less, less attractive of, uh, for, uh, to, to be killed off because one he's not going to be a threat I'm gonna play that if you're captured at the end of the game you you don't have a chance of um, advancing into the origins game uh, so he's not as much of a threat to the others but you know they're gonna to have to they're gonna to have to choose someone who's captured anyway um, because they really they're really not going to want to remove the one leader that they have on the map otherwise they have no hope at all and so that made it kind of obvious that Sid was going to get the gun. Uh, Tater and Curly both voted for her. She voted, incidentally, for Curly. So goodbye, Sid. It was good to see you again. I was hoping to be able to distinguish you a little more this time, but I don't know that I was successful in that endeavor. I've always considered Red Tomato to be a lucky sort. Um, luck seems to, to not really... Luck seems to be more of an attitude, I think, than an actuality. And he seems to have the attitude of one who is lucky, and the dice have just favored him. Um, they got uh, a breakout. A captured GK leader returns into play, which would be Jim Nasty. Um, that kind of fits with his sort of swashbuckler sort of attitude so far. He can go to any, any of these guys he wants to, so I'm going to have to decide where he wants to go. Um, and then we'll go from there. In the two kind of interesting choices for where to put Jim Nasty would have been um, north with uh, Chappie's horsemen. That would have, been, would have been exciting. Or right back outside the castle where he was before, um, which is where he eventually went. Partially because he's able to fight alongside his uh, a flock of Moonies here. And if those of you don't know, uh, Red Tomato and Mooney are good buddies. And Tater, as in Tot, anticipated Chappie's charge. He sent Dick up here to, to hold on to Thissay, um, and also sent a, a, a troop here to this, this woods hex to block the, the crossroads. So um, Chappie's going right up against it, though. He wants to head down to this abbey, which he will score points on. There are a couple, three, three big scoring opportunities for the GK player here, and then also a couple for the PK player. So... This is going to be an area of contention that the PK player currently has. Although the PK player seems to be hurting militarily, in terms of um, the area they control, things aren't looking so bad for them. 
lone Smiley managed to hold off all of those chappies in the woods. She got hurt, though. Um, basically, they had to roll a six. They were in another six situation. And there's a lot of uh, situations in this game where you just need to get a six in order to get anything. Uh, like this siege situation here, and we'll continue that right now. And the Grand Grusier uh, player has, has split off their attack a little bit. Um, Hair Bear is still hammering away at the castle with the main portion of their forces. Um, Twigmar has split off towards this, this area here. It managed to take out the unit that was on that windmill um, and is heading into Sine. Whereas Red Tomato, he's going south here against... Uh, he took out the big cannon right here. The big... Um, Cupid doll that had been shooting across the river at uh, their forces. So at uh, at Hair Bear. So that's what's going on. We're going to roll to see which um, which phase is going to be repeated. And that looks like that is the PK combat phase. I think that's going to be really nice for them if uh, if I'm correct. Let's take a look. Yep, PK combat phase. So they're going to get to attack all over again. And it ended up being a pretty decent windfall for the PK player. Uh, took out a unit here, a unit there. Nothing huge. Injured the Chappie's Knights. This guy here, it would have been nice if he had recovered, but he wasn't able to recover during the recovery phase. Um, PK will have a chance to get some reinforcements in there, though, to slow them up uh, and hopefully take Chappie's, Chappie's Charge out before they get down here. Uh, Tater had a nice gambit. Uh, hopefully, it, well, not a gambit really. Uh, gambit's the wrong word. A nice plan. I hopefully it'll it'll bear out for. Um, it seems like the the GK is a little more aware of it now, sending some more people there. If uh, it's, it really just depends if the clock is ticking. We're on uh, round nine. We're about to roll events. It just depends if she, she can slow them up enough so that she can collect those points. And a lot depends on that final die, doesn't it? Which which phase is repeated. So let's take a look at what the events are going to be at the start of turn 9. We have 42. That's going to be reinforcements. That's good for PK. So they'll probably have to... I'm going to choose in a second what they choose. I want to just roll the events and then continue off camera. 64. Good food. Um, so if Gargantua had been in play, he would not be able to eat. Snugbug likes himself some good food. Tater's forces have kind of closed ranks in the south here, um, uh, anticipating a charge from Red Tomato. Uh, it's still, she also, she's threatened by Hair Bear here as well, which is difficult. Um, she's having a rough time even without Gargantua helping the GK player. Uh, we'll see how things things go. Uh, she was able to, to thin out Chappie's charge quite a bit. He's down to half his forces. Tater may be in big trouble. She's in an unprotected space. She wanted to go there to try and revive this this dead cannon here, this um, this Vaughn. Uh, try and bring her back because she needs all the help she can get. To, just wants as many units to be able to be mobile so she can just spread out and take spaces at the end of the game. Um, however, that that unit's already been lost to her. It only took um, the combined forces of Hair Bear and Red Tomato um, uh, two two rolls to to do that. So that might have slowed them up enough so that they won't be able to take the rest. But we'll see. And she just barely hung on. She has um, this one lone knight there. This one lone dick. Um, if Chappie had decided to charge there, he might have been able to finish her off. That was not what he decided to do, though. He wanted to do this awesome flanking maneuver. Uh, not really a flanking maneuver, but he thought it looked like a flanking maneuver. And it's coming in this way. Um, not that they would want to retreat, so there's nothing really special about doing that right there. It's it's not even a particularly like weak area for them. Um, there's really no strong or weak area for them right now. Actually, I guess um, this is probably their strongest lo location. Chappie's charge paid off, though. He was able to get rid of the cannon, and that's what he wanted to do. Really long shot. He rolled a six on that last one with his, his weakened knight, who had been shot up by these guys over here. He was able to take out the cannon. That could, that could make a big difference. PK gets a bonus movement phase this round. They've been getting a lot of the um, the repeated things. They got a repeated combat round last turn. Uh, they get a repeated uh, movement round this this phase. 
Um, not sure it's going to, it's even helping them though. I mean, they're, they're really down to, to the bare bones. Not having Curly here um, to make the reinforcements was huge. That blunder on my part has really skewed the game. And I, 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 I want to reiterate that this is a very different plane in this game than how it should probably be played. Um, uh, because one, we have the real people cards, which changes it. You know, it gives people a different, different motive to for of self-preservation, which I feel is more true to true to the world. Um, but it's not like you would get to vote on who dies necessarily. I guess it would probably have been more fair to roll a die or have some randomized element. Or um, it depends on like what the death is for. It doesn't it doesn't actually say why the the leader dies. Um, and then also, you know, my blunder. Uh, with with the gymnasty maneuver, definitely changed the dynamic of the game, the narrative. Um, so, just take the take this whole thing with a huge tablespoon of salt and plenty of water. Tater hasn't taught, used the extra move to make a pretty uh, make her getaway. She would not be able to um, get to where she wants to go uh, if not for the fact that she's going to have essentially two subsequent moves. Uh, this move and then the next move she can get to the Chateau de la Roque Clermont uh, before she can get chopped up by these other folk here. So let's go ahead and do the last, we're on round 10 of the game now, turn 10, it's going pretty fast. Let's do the last event roll of the game. And that's 62. Cowardice, three PK players' troops. This is not how they want to end the game. Player's choice must immediately move to their full movement factor towards the map west edge. They are eliminated if they leave the map. Ouch, that is really rough. Three, is it three spit? No, they're full movement. Wow, so they would go six. They'd go four. So these guys could, could move and then go back, right? They could do a little two-step. So they'll go ahead and do that one two, three, and then they have to stop. Um, these guys, they can't move. What, do, what does that mean? They're towards the map west edge. So I guess she could have just chose these guys. They can't move at all because they're blocked by Chappie. You can't move through um, enemy. So we'll just do that. It, you know, it's kind of, it feels like a technicality, but... Um, that's the way we're going to do it. Okay, so now let's roll for the GK player. I think the PK player can use all the help they can get. So if they can get a technicality, that's fine. 64, good food. Ah, that's boring. I'm going to re-roll that. I don't normally do that, but I've made a mess of things already, so I might as well have fun with it. Oh, 34. Joke. There will be two gargantuan phases this turn. Ooh, that'll be fun. Okay, that's a lot more fun than good food, and it won't necessarily help one player over another. What could be PK's last move of the game, uh, they're doing fairly fairly dangerous. They spread themselves very thin in hopes of getting as much victory points as possible based on where they are. So, um, very thin here. Tater is alone in Chateau de Roque Clermont with just one dick. Um, sent the uh, sent this fellow here. That is uh, that's Smiley. That's right, Smiley to the windmill to score a couple points if they stay there. Uh, sent a dick clear over here. Slipped right into that village there, which was nice. Um, thinned out. Sine. What that's going to do, though, it's going to make it so that um, the GK player also has to kind of spread out their their efforts in order to score. But I don't think it's going to be enough. Last attacks of the game have taken place. We're going to do two gargantuan phases now due to the joke. The first gargantuan phase is going to be one, so more events. Um, and I guess we'll do that now. So oh, i got to do... Re I, hmm. All right, let's see events. This will be for the PK player. We have a 15. That's probably good for them. Let's see. Bad weather. Du well, that's not necessarily good. Double all train move costs during the whole turn, except for the roads. The rivers cannot be crossed except by bridges. All right. So we have bad weather. We have to remember that. Now let's do the GK event. Another 12. Um, and that's Gambit. The defense value of the hex, including a castle, is not added to the PK's troops resistance occupying the hex during the next ooh so if we get a combat phase here this could really um, sway things in GK's favor 
Uh, if it's a, I think four is their combat phase. No, five is their combat phase. Let's see. It's got a four. GK can move. Is that going to do anything? I don't think so. So I think that's the end of the game. I'll tally up points and then come back to you. Didn't end up even being close, which is interesting because I think, I mean, other than the real people thing, the thing that made this game different than a, a typical playing of this game, which I don't know if there's a typical playing with all the random events and whatnot, um, is that, you know, both both teams lost their big leader uh, early on. Like, the um, the GK player didn't get to use Gargantua at all other than to free Frere Jean from the Gascoignet, and it, he wasn't really even doing anything there. Uh, Gascoignet is from a different game, actually. Grand Goussier, sorry. Grand Goussier. Uh, and so he was out of there, but then the PK player didn't get the reinforcements, which was huge. They lost a lot of leaders, which was, which was I think, um, maybe luck going against them. Uh, so, you know, it's, but it's, what's interesting is you'd think Gargantua would be the big, biggest factor, but it ended up, um, Picroche, or Pic, what's his name? Prickling, Prickle, Pic, Prickle, Prickle, uh, I don't know why it's so hard for me to remember that, I'm sure I'm not even saying it properly. Anyway, um, the, fa his, his loss was his team lost much worse by, from his loss than, than the other way around. And I can't, I don't think it's just because of the other bad luck that they've had. I don't know. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I have to, I'm going to do a round of voting for the survivors of the GK team. They're each going to vote on who they're going to eliminate. Uh, of the people who don't get voted off, there's going to, I'm going to make it random from there. So it'll be an interesting mix of choice and everything. That way I don't have to do a tournament <laughs> to see who um, gets to uh, join the Origins group. I changed my mind about how I'm going to select it. So first I'm going to let people vote people off. Um, but that's, that's actually, the votes are going to be um, a negative score instead. And then what will happen is the crew is actually going to be getting, the crew of the Pope Buckland Wren is actually going to be getting some more crew members soon. Uh, they get to, they're, I'm going to allow them to decide, you know, what sort of occupation they want their crew member to have, which I was going to do anyway. Um, but here, you know, so I've assigned them each a, uh, an occupation. And so the person with the highest score, basically, because if you get voted, you get a negative score of that, the occupations they choose are going to be the people that join the crew. And there we have it. There's how it worked out. So... I will put it to the um, crew of the Pobuklin Wren soon when they get to that point. Um, they're currently in a conversation with Commander Red, and he will ask them eventually what sort of uh, personnel they would like to join their crew.